And they do like a warning, like I can't unsee what they're about to do. The following video is a demonstration of me doing book repair.
Hi, sweetheart. How can I help you? Um, I accidentally dropped my book right there. You did? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. What happened? I was at school, and I realized my book was in, wasn't in my backpack, and I accidentally dropped it on accident. Oh, no. Well, thank you for telling me, okay? And what I'll do is I'll take a look at this and see if I can fix it. But let me tell you a secret. It's really important to take care of your books. Mm -hmm. And so what I think you should do next time mm -hmm. is why don't you, when you're walking to school or between class, mm -hmm. why don't you keep your book in your backpack? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. That'll keep it much safer, and then, then you won't drop it. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. Have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye. Okay, it looks like you have this and loss out. Okay, don't forget that your books are due back Wednesday. Thank you so much. And then reset at the end? Sure. Mm -hmm. okay. So a quick way to integrate technology into your classroom is using a service called Socrative to take quick quizzes and different types of formative assessments with your students. So what you'll do is you'll go to Socrative.com and you can create an account. And what will happen when you create your account is you'll see the screen that I have here. And at the top of your screen, you're going to see a special code. This code is assigned specifically to your classroom. Once you've signed up for an account, you'll want to have your students sign up for an account as well. Both the accounts for you and for your students are free. So one thing that's neat about Socrative is that you can log in in any room with your account and then that room will project a signal to your students. So what I'd like to show you today is how to create a quiz for your students. Now this doesn't necessarily have to be a quiz that you put into your gradebook, but you can use it as a form of a formative assessment. So you can have it as an exit ticket or a way to do a warm up with your students in the morning. And it's really quick, really easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to click over here where it reads quizzes. When you do that, you can see that there's been a quiz that was already made, but you also have the option to add your own quiz. So we're going to just do a really short quiz for this session. And so you can uh, practice in your own classroom with your own curriculum. So let's click Add Quiz. I'm going to create a new quiz. So what we'll do is we'll title this quiz Technology Integration. Okay. If you notice, it also gives you the option to align it to certain standards. Typically, these will be common core standards, but you can also type in your own standards. So what I want to know today is how often have you used a tool like Socrative in your classroom? So what I'm going to do is let's do a multiple choice question. And I'm going to type. So my question is going to be, how often do you use applications like Socrative in your classroom? I know many of you have used things like Today's Meet, or you have used some of our different polling services within its learning, but this is another tool that you can use easily and quickly in your classroom. You have also the opportunity to add an image. So for social studies teachers, if you would like to incorporate a DBQ type item, Math teachers, you can incorporate a problem, say, from a really star exam. This can be used with any discipline. And then I'll provide my answer choices. It 
it defaults to giving you five answer choices. For this one, I'm just going to use four. You also have the opportunity to add an additional answer. What you can do for your students, if you want to provide immediate feedback, which is something that we all try and incorporate in our classroom, you can provide an explanation for the question and the answer at the bottom. If this was the type of question that had only one correct answer, what you would do is click the box on the side to indicate which answer is correct. So for my explanation, I'm just going to thank participants like you for taking this poll. When you're done, you'll click the save icon at the top right hand corner of your screen. And this gives you an example of what your question will look like. You have the options to put your questions in different orders. You also have the option here, which is to duplicate or copy your question from above. So if you have a formatted quiz. I want to delete that question for my this sake. Okay. Once my quiz is finished, I will click Save and Exit. Now if you notice, in my quizzes files, I have the technology integration here. I can copy this quiz if say I want to do a formulaic type quiz every Monday, every Tuesday, if you quiz vocabulary or math questions or lab safety rules, you can copy that same quiz and initiate it again. You can download the quiz. You can also share it with your team or with your department. Now that I have this quiz, I'm going to click where it reads launch. And launch means I want to release this quiz to be able to be taken by my students. So I will click quiz. And you can see here I can search by the title of the name of that quiz or I can just click from my selections. I'll click next. And then I have the option for how I want to deliver this quiz. So I can provide my students instant feedback. I can leave it open where the students can go in any order that they would like to. Or if I want to be in control of how the students take the quiz, then I can do a teacher paced quiz. But for our sake, I'm going to do an instant feedback. And with that, I have the options here of how I would like that quiz delivered to me. So I can require the students names. If I want to provide different formats, say, of the quiz, I can have it shuffle questions. I can also have it shuffle the answers if I want to try and prevent cheating. I can show quiz feedback, and then I can show their final score. You can also limit if they have one or several attempts to take this quiz. So let's click Start. So what I would see here is once my students have all logged in, I would see all of their names, and then I would see their answer choices. For this sake, I don't have classes loaded in here, and but you would see under your class your students' names and their answer choice. When the quiz is finished, meaning I do not want my students to have access to it anymore that period, I would click Finish. Socrative gives me the opportunity for reports, so I can see if, say, if this quiz had several questions, I could see if there was a particular question that most of my students missed, and that would help guide my instruction the next day on topics or skills that I would need to cover again. You can view it in a chart, so if you would like it to analyze data that you could take to, say, a department or a course level meeting, you can do that as well. So for our training today, I'm just going to click on Get Reports. And then I have the option if I want to look at it through individual students, by individual questions, or if I just want to see my entire class as an Excel document. I have the option to email it to myself as well as my team members. So if we wanted to compare our data via email against each other to see how we performed in different areas, we could do that. Or you can download the document to your computer. So I'll click download. And then if you'll see down here in the bottom, it provides me 
that report in an Excel document, which then I could take and manipulate the data however I would like to. This is very helpful when you are doing individual conferencing with students. This is helpful if you are using this as a formative assessment tool, as I suggested, to see exactly where your students are in their learning process. So once again, this is a tool called Socrative that you can use in your classroom for different types of assessment. I suggest as you're getting started, use it as a quick formative assessment. You have different types of quizzes, different types of questions. If you have any questions about this, please come uh, please feel free to come see me in the library and I'll be happy to walk you through it or we can plan something together collaboratively and I can come to your classroom and I can help you use this tool with your students. Thank you so much. It's a free resource and um, you just sign up right there. Okay. No big deal. Um, so this is where I go to get all my reviews in one place and um, I can create you know, various lists. It's very, very user-friendly. Right up here I have um, my saved list so you can see I already have my fall 2018 list started. Okay. And anything, like I'm gonna use uh, my Fallout resources and my Kirkus reviews um, to help me look for particular books. Hi, this is Amy Another really great thing that they do is you can upload your um, catalog. Oh, okay. Okay, and if you upload your catalog, then they will they will let you do. Um, um, they'll they'll search through your stuff to see if you're missing anything from the series. Okay. They will also update you on new things that are coming out in the series that you already have. Okay. So that's very handy. So they can help you with gaps or yeah, expanding. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, they also have something like, um, what is it, Library Guild? Uh, you know where you can, you buy like a subscription basically and right. you get 12 new books or however many categories that you've purchased per month. Now, because you're not genrefied, it's perfect because you kind of pick from my list. Um, Okay, so against the odds, right, it's book two, which means that I obviously already have book one. Mm -hmm. um, it's showing me here that it's on a saved list. That could just mean that I've tried to purchase it before. Okay. Okay, and so it was on another list, and maybe it didn't make the cut because right. of, like, a do not exceeds number or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or they didn't have it available at the time. Like a back order kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, um, and I can click on this, and it'll... Um, tell me where it was or whatever too. Okay. It's on my ad to, and that's a PO that I had. Okay. okay. So I could go in, just click right here and check in on that whole list and see what's happened with it and you know, the status of it. Everything else has been purchased, okay. which is why I took it off of this and put it on the other. Right. So what I could do too, so that that doesn't happen again. So this shows what you already own, yeah. as well as what they weren't able to include. Right. Okay. So I'm just going to remove it from this list. Mm -hmm. So then I'm not going to get that warning on my fall 2018 list anymore. Okay? okay. So I'll feel like, okay, that's where it's supposed to be. These have all been, been taken care of. I don't have to do anything with that. Um, so I'm just going to go back to my fall list. And this will merge with your collection that you already uploaded? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. So I, I upload my collection maybe three times a year. Okay. But if I purchase them just from Follette, it'll keep it going. Oh. Okay. okay. So, so you if have I to made go a and purchase, add those right. Yourself. So if I made a purchase from Permabound, for instance, mm -hmm. that's gonna have to be uploaded. Okay. Right. Okay. So I'm gonna click on this one. So you see the tags. It says you know fantasy. Mm -hmm. This one of action, fantasy, mystery. So that one, that's where I have to say, okay, which one is the forefront? Right. Or where do I think my students would look for this book? Okay. okay. Now um, you, you can make that determination. Right. Okay. Because I have genre, um, genre my my library is genreified. I was also one of the um, pilot people for the genreifying for Follett, which was really cool. That is cool. So. What they've done is they've given me a drop down of all of my genres. Oh, okay? okay, so what I get to do is I get to look at those tags and like this first one says fantasy. 
Now, did you determine the genres? Right. Okay. Those are based specifically on my library. Okay. Which is pretty cool. That is cool. So, um, and then see where it says a genre not shown here. It's because I have more than what they can put in a drop down. Okay. But I can click right in there and it'll open get up my more. sports fiction or whatever. Okay. Um, it shows you the different formats that it has available for that particular title, which is pretty cool in one location. And I can click on different ones and just go to that. Okay. Um, do you typically get the fall it bound every yeah, time? Yeah, I'm I'm, if I can get fall it bound, library bound, glue, blah, blah, blah whatever, right. I'm going for it. If, you know, and on the fall it bound, um, they're actually sometimes rather frequently less expensive than a hardback. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So it's uh, definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. The other cool thing is it says explore the complete series here, okay. right? So then. It, now I know it's for sure part of a series. They've done a good job of putting it in the title as well. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing is I get to look down here. It says this item is on your current list. You already own this item. And now in August 15th, 2018, that's coming up. Um, so I could click on this. Oh, and it tells you it's available for pre-order. Yes, and okay. it says this one. This is wanted on your current list. So I already have that one, okay. right? So let's go back to the one I was working on before. Okay. And it does let you back up a lot. That's, that's, that's nice. very handy. Um, I just want to get back to my original. All right. <clears throat> so you can go through uh, all of this. This is not what I, where I was. This is what I was at. You can go through all this, and you have your information from the publisher. You have all mm -hmm. of your cataloging information here, right? Um, here we go. So, <clears throat> under full text reviews, it gives me, and they're going to vary, right? So, if it was done by School Library Journal, or if it was done by Hornbook, or it was done by whatever, they're, they're all going to be here. Okay. Um, I love Kirkus Reviews. Do you use Kirkus Reviews? I do use Kirkus. Okay, so my favorite about them is they tell you the diversity of the characters. Yes. And they're very like, this white girl is in love with this white boy in this white school with white, you know, and you're like, right, got it. No diversity in this one. Which is, it, that's okay too, but you know, if like you're aware, if, right? If that's your population. The only black kid, you mm -hmm. know, Nick, white. I love that. Okay. So it also says that this is a graphic fantasy hybrid okay which I didn't get from just the tag up at the top that said fantasy right, right. Um, but I love having all of it here uh, school library journal um, I use them a lot for my age range because mm -hmm. basically I want to because it's oh, like oh yeah <laughs> which is okay I just didn't know yeah um, I was trying to get the screen <laughs> okay well, that's fine you can go for the screen um it's um, I want to have at least one review that says it should belong in my my library, like a star review or something right. like that. Well, n the age wise, because oh, sometimes age. you know, like Kirkus is saying, ten to sixteen is a good age. But this is saying says four six. right, four through six, and um, and most of the time Kirkus is very lenient. Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're more lenient typically. If I can get School Library Journal to say eighth grade, that's good then, too. You know, yeah, okay. So um, we have that, and then the other cool thing, oh. Hi, can I help you find something? Uh, yeah, I need a, I'm talking, I'm researching on the American Revolution. American Revolution, okay. What's your name? Vincent. Vincent, I'm Miss Oha. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet uh, you. So we're looking for American Revolution. So, um, mm -hmm. Are you doing a research project or something? Yeah, one mm -hmm. struggle. For social studies? Okay. So for our catalog, we're going to look by subject since we're not really sure what we're looking for first. So if you'll type in American mm -hmm. Revolution. Okay, so we'll say we did mean revolution because there's a spelling problem there. That's okay. Okay. So when you pull this up on our catalog, you're going to see all of these different results. So what I think we should do, um, since you're not sure exactly what you want to research, is we can scroll
scroll through a little bit and see if something grabs your attention that you might want to look at. Okay, so when it has call number here, that means it's going to be a book, and but we also have other resources as well. So let's scroll through and see if anything kind of jumps out at you. So what yeah. I'm going to do on my paper is I'm going to write down the call number so I know where to look. So it's going to be 700. Okay. And since it's 700, I know that this is going to be in the nonfiction section. Okay, I'm just making myself a little note here. But before we go look, let's see if we can get any details about it. So we'll click on details. And if you scroll down just a little bit, it's going to tell me that it's dealing with African American history, the Harlem Renaissance, and then here at the top, the intellectual revolution of black America. Okay, so is that something kind of what you were looking for? Yes. Okay, so why don't we go take a look at the book and we'll see if that works for us. Okay. All right, let me take you to it. Okay, so we have sweets here. So this has cookies, different types of treats inside. Has a little commentary and then there's recipes in there as well. And then if we go to the side over here, so the 641 wrap around, we have more cookbooks here. Um, there's a teen one here. You said you like cakes. So this one is called Piece of Cake. So it has like the different kind of like cake boss or whatever. So you can use that. And then that's it for our cookbook section. So this video is evidence of skill in reading promotion and creating displays or other types of reading promotion. Just look at Kirkus basically and buy whatever Kirkus has. Yeah, I've read something um, like in one of my PD things that really, when we have meetings, we should feature a book. Like, like she reads in a book, they right? Don't read, they don't. No, so I thought about kind of modeling that with starting our meetings with some sort of an e book or picture book. Um, or, you know, a, a nonfiction something yeah. just to kind of highlight what's in the collection. So I, I would agree with that. Because yeah. I know a lot of the reader's advisory just comes from them looking on things like Amazon or Google that say, yeah. you know, if you like this, do this. Instead of actually doing, you know, a reference interview. Or a reader's right. advisory. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
I would agree with that too. Should I do like two books per, sh per shell? Is that the best? Maybe three? Okay. I do. I like that. I do. I like how you get like every walk of life, every group of yeah, person. For sure. It's not limited to just you know the one area. Um, and that's another goal I have too is our our, a lot of our materials are definitely whitewashed. Our programming is definitely yeah. whitewashed, it's, which I think we need, you know, fine, because that is representative of the majority of our community. However, there needs to be some diversity. I definitely think that we need to 
expand just for those kids too yeah I need to know um like for example you know just thinking about the last holiday season mm-hmm. I mean it was all Christmas it was all for everyone there was nothing Hanukkah there was nothing Kwanzaa there was nothing just winter yeah. holidays which again like I'm fine doing Christmas because again you need to that's represented but it was nothing it was just Christmas it was just Christmas so if we're going to do just Christmas, then we also need to be inclusive of the other holidays. Mm-hmm. If we're just going to do happy holidays, then to me that's better yeah. than just... And, and include everything. Yeah. And some people don't even say you could do a winter mm-hmm. winter. You just need a winter time, like mm-hmm. the season. You know, happy winter. Yeah. So, um, and I foresee pushback on that as well. Oh, yeah. Because I think there's going to be a lot of personal, you know. Well, and I think that's been part of the problem. This video is an example of modeling, promoting ethical information, and seeking behaviors. So, guys, when you go into Google, you'll go ahead and log in there. I'm going to show you how to search for images without breaking copyright, so images that you can actually use. So type in um, an example of an image that you want to see. And when you get your results, you're going to click on where it reads settings, so go back up to the top settings and then scroll down to where it reads advanced search and then if you would scroll down to the bottom and see where it reads file type and underneath that it says usage rights you're going to go to where it reads usage rights down here and then you're going to look at ones that are free to use okay and so you're going to make a choice. Are you just going to use it the way it is, or do you want to change it and modify it? If you just want to use it how it is, you'll select free to use or share. Okay, and then click advanced search. And now those images that you have are ones that you can share and use on your work without violating copyright. Yeah, now you still have to cite it, but you do have permission to use it without breaking copyright. And to double check yourself, if you scroll up to the top, it tells, it tells you, it reminds you that it's labeled for non-commercial use. So that's another way that you can double check yourself. Thank you, guys. Okay, here's some video. This the games. This one? Mm-hmm. And what website are we using, girls, to practice our words? Um, PBS Kids. It's like games. PBS Kids? Uh huh. There's some games. If you want to skip that, ask the girl that is the hero. Here. Ooh, do we want a forest or a swamp? I would do this. I wouldn't. This is so easy. Shit closed. Keep going. Walk. Oh, you're supposed to use these. See, that's to run. You have to put. How do you get to turn it like that? And yep. You have to do. Both arrows together. You're, yeah, you're supposed to put both of those together. There you go. There you See? go. Ah, hit both of those. The following video is a demonstration of evidence of personal professional growth. I'm going to be going through purpose reviews.
reading reviews about books specifically focused on books with diversity for our students to add to the collection. As I'm reading, I'm going to be marking books that I feel would fit into our collection development plan. Thank you. 
So this video is going to be with Darcy Burroughs, who is a middle school librarian, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit, or mainly she and a little <laughs> bit of me, <laughs> are going to talk about um, flexible versus fixed scheduling. Okay. So when I got to my library uh, at Space Center Intermediate, it was definitely fixed schedule. Um, all of my ELA teachers were trained that they were coming in every other week, um, no matter what, and they had their day and they had their time and that kind of was it only ELA that came only in? Only ELA, okay. exactly. So that's one of the worst parts of fixed schedules, right? Because we spend so much time dedicated to just the ELA classes that mm -hmm. we don't really have time for any of the other curriculum or any of the other su subjects. And nobody else feels like they have true access to the library. And I'm all about access, mm -hmm. right? So um, what I did was I emailed my all of my ELA teachers and I just said oh I'm so excited to be here and to work with you and I you know I've heard you're a fantastic group and then I gave them a really great graph that I had that was about fixed schedules flexible schedules and a fixed flex right right and so it, each one said basically this is what it is here are the benefits of it and here are the drawbacks okay, okay? And so it comes across very um, neutral. Sure. Here's the data. Right, here's the data. data. And based on the data, you kind of have to pick fixed, I mean, flex schedule, right? right. Because it sh it's good for kids and it's good for colleagues. Yes. So I just said, you know, here's the information. Um, I'd love to get your feedback. Please let me know which one you think works best for our students. Okay. Right? Like so it's mm -hmm. student-centered. And so they wrote me back, and I think begrudgingly, we're like, Ugh, I guess we could do flexible, or, you know, flex looks good, but maybe fix flex, because they were on the fence about, which sure. I understand, because as an ELA teacher, um, it went dumb, is that okay? Yeah. Okay, That's just want to make sure. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Okay, <laughs> so um, as an ELA teacher, I wanted my Friday. Right. Give me my Friday, because the library wasn't a collaboration spot, it was... A little bit of a vacation for me. We went down. We got new books. Mm -hmm. um, the kids I love for books. The yeah. yeah, and I, so I'm in there, and I'm teaching, talking about um, books in the library, and I would tell my librarian, why don't you go to your office and do your paperwork? Because she wasn't nice to students. Okay. So I was acting as librarian, so I love Friday. So you already kind of do a teacher yeah, librarian yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'd read all the books, and I was like, look, you need this one because, then, you know. <laughs> so I was doing all the reference uh, questions and everything with my kids right there. A little reader advisory. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so um, when I put it back on my ELA teachers and I said, look, what's good for students? They could see immediately just from that graph. Right. Of course, flexible schedules is, are, are better for students. Well, and offering them, offering them the hybrid of the fixed slash flex. Right. Which was kind so of a I had, transition. Well, I had some people that said, yeah, that's what I want to do. And, but the vast majority of them, I think maybe even guiltily were like, okay. You know, right? Which is fine because I just needed them to get on board and to ha have a sense that they had a voice in that choice. Mm -hmm. So um, I wrote him back and I said, "I'm so excited that you all want to try flexible scheduling." Perfect, right? Because nobody was like, "Hey, what did you tell her? What did you tell her?" You know. Right. So um, I said, "That's so great." You know, we're we're gonna work out all the kinks this year, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. 
And um, what it did really was that I got rid of lessons just for lessons. Right. Right. Like, okay, this week we're going to talk about research, even though nobody's doing research. Or just a yeah. book talk and you have limited copies, but yeah, every kid wants it. Exactly. Okay. So we, we got rid of those. I still talk books. I still do book trailers. I can maybe pop three or four in mm -hmm. and I change them up regularly okay. and I create like um, a PowerPoint, but a PowerPoint just to have a place. Right. Okay. So, but I'll have 60 book talks. And I'll do the first three with this class, and then I'll do, you know, four, five, and six with the next okay. class, and so forth, so that the book that I'm talking about is probably in the library. Right. Or I'll pull it, and I'll make sure that I have it, and then, you know, the first three people that get to me, they grab exactly. that they book. Have that right. book. <laughs> so, um, so I do that, but I'm not doing lessons just, like, in a vacuum, right? Okay. My lessons go along with what the teachers are teaching in their class. I'm a benefit to the to my colleagues, mm -hmm. and I'm definitely a benefit to the students that way. Is it librarian led, um, or are you finding that it's more? It's actually a true teacher and librarian collaboration. Depends the on the lesson. Okay. Some lessons teachers aren't comfortable with teaching, right. and that's why they're reaching out to me anyway. Typically, and plagiarism, copyright, and right? Like, that. like you do it, you know, and that's okay. Teachers, so that's great. Um, and I don't mind doing that. And then some of them are definitely collaborative, and some of them now because I have a flexible schedule. They're like, oh, yeah, we're doing this, whatever. And I'm like, y'all come do it in the library. Even though they have one-to-one, -one, we have one-to-one -one, uh, devices. Right. Y'all bring the whole seventh grade ELA. Mm -hmm. Y'all come to the library, and then you have three teachers roaming around right. helping, or four teachers roaming around yeah, with me, you know, yeah. um, helping to get the students where they ought to be, yes. you know. And you can have diverse grouping and all kinds of stuff with that. And we have a big space, so we can all be in there together. Mm -hmm. Kids are bouncing ideas off of each other, and now they're From bouncing outside of their classroom. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a very collaborative space. But I can only do that because I have flexible scheduling, right? And every once in a while I have a teacher who's like, so um, we're going to go ahead and do Tuesdays for the rest of the semester. And I said, no. Mm -hmm. You can have next Tuesday. I can do that because my schedule's clear. Right. But if a math teacher wants to come in the Tuesday after that, and they, you know, we have a good reason to be in the library, and they're like, oh, no. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's just because for years and years they were trained that Tuesdays were their days. Right. So I understand that. I get their point, but I just say, no, we're not doing that. Are you finding that you're getting more of the other disciplines coming Absolutely. in now? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I've had math in a lot, which I was like, oh, I'm not going to get them in. Like, like, I don't know. Even if they come in just for the space to begin with, sure. then I'm creating a relationship and then we can collaborate. Well, and you're showing the students access. Absolutely. Because they didn't have before because they right. got brought into the library before. And it's, you know, now it's a learning commons. Mm -hmm. And now... Even if you hate it coming in with your ELA class, maybe you might connect it during your math class, and now you might be willing to come in and talk to me before school right. about needing a book that pertains specifically to you and something that you're going through, and now I can put the right book in your hand because you trust me. Well, and it could be that that student or group of students doesn't necessarily have a strength in language arts or the humanities. Right, right. And so if that's the only time they've ever come to the library with a fixed schedule. And I suck at English. The library is part of English. I'm not going to the library. Yeah, I don't like the library. Yeah. Yeah. So then they can see, like, oh, well, science uses the library, too. The math, right. it, I like math and science, and so then that might change their... Right. And it's a good way to get out my makerspace stuff, my STEM-related makerspace stuff, and use it with a purpose, rather yes. than just, like, are you entertaining yourself before school or during lunch or whatever? Are you just playing with pipe cleaners? Right. <laughs> or do you what are you doing? Do anyway, um, <laughs> so, yeah, I a huge advocate. I understand fixed schedules for the familiarity and the comfort, mm -hmm. but that familiarity and comfort is for teachers okay. and more student-centered. Right. So being a student-centered library, you should have a flexible schedule. Do you think that you would still have a flexible schedule if you were staying in elementary school? or It is very difficult mm -hmm. to do, a, especially a true flexible schedule. Right. Virtually impossible mm -hmm. at an elementary school. I don't know, honestly, I don't know how they do what they do. Because they they have constant, they're on a rotation with right. everybody, and they don't have... And sometimes twice, because one rotation will be a checkout time, book talk time, yeah. and the other one will actually be a lesson, a, lesson, a, lesson. a supplement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've had co um, colleagues that, they're in elementary, and they're a part of the specials rotation, yes. right? Yes. So, when I hear that, and, and, and it's so interactive, too, mm -hmm. and elementary, I'm like, oh, puppets, and da 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 and I'm like, oh, my God. Story time. Yeah, like, <laughs> uh -huh. bring it down a notch, but they can't. You know, mm -hmm. that's their job, that's what they do. 
I don't know how you would even propose a flexible schedule in an elementary school when they are as stuck with their schedules as they are. Or just stacked with even just one librarian Absolutely. for an entire campus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially with our campuses. Well, so like, like McWhorter has, well, yeah, McWhorter has close to 900. Yeah. I have 800. And something. That's the same thing as my intermediate school. Right. They have one librarian. Um, they no do, assistance. No, they don't have any paid assistance. Right. Um, they have a lot, you know, they have a lot of parent involvement. But like my school, we have good parent involvement, but not in the library. Exactly. They don't want to do library stuff. Mm -hmm. That's fine. You know, right. you have three parents manning the um, the school store. Yes. But they don't want to come to the library. Mm -hmm. And well, that could okay. be too the old stigma of the library is it's a quiet place. Uh -huh. Can't really do a lot. Well, they come in and they want they want the kids to get quiet. And I'm like, oh, we don't do that now. <laughs> We're not and that they're library. like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I create a space where it's kind of quiet over here, but this is interactive over here. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know that sometimes this gets a little loud, but you know, I'm, ch I'm trying to make a space for everybody, but the design of my library isn't future ready. Well, the design of my library is a big open space right. where everybody used to have to be quiet. Exactly. And so now I'm trying to create spaces, even though there's no like, wall around it to say okay this is a quiet space well you know? and with your flexible scheduling like you said you are bringing in different kids right so the kids are coming in there now just just and i mean that in a, no, no, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. like just to read right they're coming in to create and mm -hmm. be constructivists right you exactly know, with their learning yeah instead of recipients so, i kind of have like a reading area i'm like okay we're going to keep it quieter over here this is um, interactive mm -hmm. work we're going to do here, you know, that kind of thing. And the, they appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, they participate in kind of the way that I want for the most part. Right. But I, it's just not going to be silent. My goal is also to not have it sound like the commons. Exactly. Because it can sound like the commons. And what's the point of having two spaces that are identical? Do the same thing. Right. If you're just here to talk, just go back to the commons and talk. Right. You know, that's fine. You're more than y'all can even yell up there. Nobody's out there saying y'all be quiet, you know. Exactly. But in here, people, you need to. Come, I tell them to come in with a purpose. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if your purpose is to study, perfect. This is a good spot for you. If your purpose is just to lounge and read, this is a great spot for mm -hmm. you. If your purpose is y'all working on a project, here's my supply cart. So you shouldn't need anything. Right. Right. Like here's my supply cart. Well, you're welcome to it. Put things back where you found them. Mm -hmm. If you need help holler I'm right over here exactly you know what I mean and and I will come help with your research I'll help you with your citations I'll mm -hmm. help you with all that so do um, you find with the flexible scheduling that you're able to get to more of those kids absolutely yeah mm -hmm. absolutely well because I can also tell a whole class hey come in you know what else I do is I check myself out of the library really yeah I'll say check out a librarian uh -huh. you know and so they'll they'll be like hey Darcy can you come down and help with this you know class now I have student aides in my library mm -hmm. who I trust very much. They're very well trained and I have a, a teacher that works behind me and I'll open up the door to my office and I'll say, Sullivan, I'm going to go to so-and-so's class. I'll be back. I prep my students. Mm -hmm. Like, listen, Sullivan is watching y'all. Right. You're watching the library, you know, and you need to be responsible, which, you know, sure. that's what that's I have anyway. Yeah. yeah. And um, then I'll go down to a science class and I'll help in the science class for 30 minutes and then okay. come back. So with the flexible scheduling, that also gives you the opportunity to leave. I can block time. And not just groups yeah. coming to you. Mm -hmm. So then the library is not just confined to one spot on campus. The entire campus becomes a library, right. essentially. Yeah. And I've also done, I've been able to do a mobile book cart um, oh. during testing and that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. I'd come down to like, hey, I need to check a book out, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't have to stay in the library because I don't have you know, this Westbrook that's right. scheduled every Tuesday, you know, mm -hmm. I can, I can be out of the library. So have you looked at data that shows that circulation's increased or it has. was increased yeah. since you changed mm -hmm. the schedule? It has, absolutely. Um, I don't keep stats on like who comes into the library mm -hmm. because I found it prohibitive to some students. They didn't want to wait in the line to enter their code to come in and sit down and that kind of thing. Right. So I'm just like, just come in and sit. That's fine. Okay. You know, so I don't keep those stats. But even with that, but you've seen an increase. I know that my kids, there are kids in the library, so much so in the morning, well, like the, the principals even like, we got to shut this down at lunch. And I was like, we're not shutting it down. Right. 
if you want to minimize the number of sixth graders that are coming in because they aren't taking care of their business in the cafeteria, mm -hmm. here are some passes and you can have them come on a pass base. Right. But there are also kids that will come to the door and be like, Mr. Barber, you just got a pass. And I'll be like, have you taken care of your business? Come in, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but with my flexible scheduling too, I can have kids in from lunch and have classes, mm -hmm. you know, and, and work those classes around that. Okay. And like when the PTA, I mean, the PTA are part of my um, stakeholders. Okay. You know, so when they're having a big meeting and they're like, we really would like the space, I can schedule, I can say, you know what, I know that so-and-so has a schedule that will allow for this meeting because they're off okay. during second period. Sure. I can see them at the beginning of first period and I can see them at the end of third period. Let me book them on the day that PTA is in here during second. So that even opens you up to the community coming in to yeah. utilize the library yes. at the same time. Yeah. So I'm a huge proponent, huge advocate of flexible scheduling. And I, I feel like it's essential, especially in a junior high and high school. Mm -hmm. You know, you do the best that you can with elementary, but they're, they are so structured. Right. You know, and, and, and then part of it, too, is I think their library time takes more of a dedicated time because they are developing and learning how to utilize a library. Right. They're not coming in independently. and right. They um, don't know what to look for. They don't know where they're looking yet. Right. That's part of what they're learning. Yeah, and their science class, they're not doing as much research either. No. So it's just, it's different. I, I don't know. I, I've never been an elementary school teacher. That's mm -hmm. not my personality. Me either. <laughs> um, I'd be like, I feel like I'd hurt them. You know what I mean? Right. Like, with my sarcasm. Like, I'm sorry. You are a good child. Don't cry. Yeah. <laughs> joke anyway um so yeah i uh i've never been an elementary school teacher i don't i don't know that kind of structure mm -hmm. but but as far as secondary it's secondary six, absolutely it should be flexible when it would seem to me just the sheer number of the amount of teachers in the secondary campuses versus an elementary campus mm -hmm. well and the fact that there's so much that's going on in the library that's going on in classrooms Right. right, so like we, especially with CCISD being one to one, yeah. Well, there's so many access. types of literacy, right? Right, and we teach all types of literacy, mm -hmm. and uh, we teach citizenship, you know, in yeah. lots of different capacities. Absolutely. So it's it's important that we are in a science classroom and we're in a math classroom and we're in social studies. You mm -hmm. know, like the murals in my library, they're all history based, and it drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. Be, and they go, "Well, why do I get rid of these?" So because we are not history. Right. We are today and tomorrow. We're in you know, we're creating yeah, a future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's my, my whole spiel on flexible scheduling. Thank you so yeah, much. Absolutely. This video is an example of modeling, promoting ethical information, and seeking behaviors. So guys, when you go into Google, if you'll go ahead and log in there, I'm going to show you how to search for images without breaking copyright, so images that you can actually use. So type in um, an example of an image that you want to see. And when you get your results, you're going to click on where it reads settings. So go back up to the top. So you'll see settings. And then scroll down to where it reads advanced search. And then if you would, scroll down to the bottom. And see where it reads file type. And underneath that it says usage rights. You're going to go to where it reads usage rights. Down here. And then you're going to look at ones that are free to use, okay? And so you're going to make a choice. Are you just going to use it the way it is, or do you want to change it and modify it? If you just want to use it how it is, you'll select free to use or share. Okay, and then click advanced search. 
and now those images that you have are ones that you can share and use on your work without violating copyrights. Yeah, now you still have to cite it, but you do have permission to use it without breaking copyrights. And to double check yourself, if you scroll up to the top, it tells, it tells you, it reminds you that it's labeled for non-commercial use. So that's another way that you can double check yourself. Thank you guys. So this is my video of processing and sending out interlibrary loans. and then we're gonna take these and drop them off in the intercampus mail. Today I'm going to model the information problem solving process of accessing the library's catalog and its resources from home. So the first thing you're gonna do is use your internet browser and type in www.ccisd.net. When you do that, it'll bring you to the district's webpage. You're going to scroll down to around the middle of the page where you'll see a blue ribbon. You'll scroll over to the right and click where it reads library. From here, you will notice that it brings you to the library and media services page where you have hyperlinks on the left hand side for the different resources that are offered as well as colored icons in the center of the page. The first thing that we're going to look at is the library online catalog. So go ahead and click that link. And you will see that it offers the different types of schools. So we're going to look under high schools for Clear Falls High School. It welcomes you to the library's page. With this orange bar underneath home, you'll see that that is the home page for the library. You know that you're in Clear Falls because there's our logo and our name. But for now, we're going to access the catalog. We click on the catalog icon. It provides you a search bar with the different types of searches that you can conduct, as well as the different ways that you can view the catalog. For today, we're just going to use basic. And so what I'm going to do is a keyword search for the term American Revolution. I could search for that specifically within the title or the subject or if there were books in a series, but we're just going to do keyword to see what we have. I want to make sure that I'm looking in Clear Falls High School. For material type, for our sake today, I'm just going to look for books. And I'm not going to worry about reading level or interest level, just to show you that you can limit your search to what types of resources that we have. Then I'm going to click the keyword icon. And then the catalog pulls up a list of resources. It provides you the title as well as the call number, so where you can locate it in the library. And then it also provides information to you about the availability of this item. 
So we have one copy in our library and we have one available. If I wanted to learn more about this item, I could click on details and it provides me with more information about this item. If I go back, it takes me back to my original search and that's one way that you can look for materials in our library. Now, to get back to our resources page, you're going to click back, back again, and then as you see, we come back to our library media services page. Now, if you're looking for specifically a list of the resources that we offer digitally, you will go to the high school online resources and click that icon. You know that you're looking at high school online resources because it's here in this top ribbon. And then we have a, an image of each of the resources as well to the right of it, a brief explanation of what that resource is. So here is another way that you can access our catalog. You can go directly to the high school resources and then find our catalog. We have things from teachingbooks.net to Gale, which is very popular with students, as well as facts on file. And then we have our encyclopedias as well as a database. If you scroll up, you'll see that we have organized here our ebook libraries specifically in this selection. Underneath them, we have our primary resources. And then finally at the bottom, we have the streaming video resources that our library offers. If you are interested in how to use these resources or incorporate them into your curriculum or your lessons, please feel free to come to the library or send me an email and I would love to collaborate with you on how to integrate these into your lessons or supplement the curriculum, as well as if you're interested in bringing your students to the library to learn how to use these different resources, I'd be more than happy to help you with that as well. And of course, always you're welcome to pop in and just say hi. We would love to see you in the library. Thank you. This is a video of using statistical reports to remove parents and volunteers out of the desking system. Thank you.
So I followed these directions to create the report that is at the top in progress. So to run a checked out materials report. Right. Okay, so you are probably going to have to operate in this screen. Okay because this one will log out because it's open over here. Okay. I believe, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and do this screen and go, go ahead and go to reports. Yeah. Page number 11. We're gonna do... Veteran? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. Current checkouts. Yes. Okay. And you're gonna click over here on that portion. This portion right here. Oh, okay. And we want all that are checked out. Mm -hmm. okay. We don't want the rest of that. Right. We want it in a PDF. Mm -hmm. And then continue? Yes. Or, okay. That's perfect. Page three. All right, we're going to change our patron types, and that's updated here. Okay. So just student. Right. All right, we created a separate patron type because of students that lost books during Harvey. So okay. that's what that is. And then we want other sites since it's summer school. Mm -hmm, exactly. And then take that off. Right. Okay. But all For resources. purposes, yeah. Okay. And then continue. Mm -hmm. Title. We're going to go ahead and include the price because we need as much information as possible and phone numbers so that we can contact students okay. if they fail to turn in tomorrow. Great. Okay. And then run report. Correct. And then with this system, it'll continue to show pending like forever. <laughs> <laughs> so you just have to click on refresh list and it'll show you that it's in process and then oh, it's completed. completed. All right. So you've walked through the entire process. Okay, and then I view my product. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'll send out to staff right. um, to get their assistance in getting books turned in. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank Perfect. you. Perfect. Thank you. This is a video of an email that I am sending out to the entire staff of the campus. Um, reminding them about checked out materials for students and if there is anything that I can do to help them um, get their materials in. This video is demonstrating the family library programming skill. Um, I am sending home a flyer via email to the summer school parents to encourage them to participate in the summer reading program offered by the city uh, public library. This is the image of the flyer attachment that is going out to the parents giving them information about the summer reading program offered by the City of League City Public Library. This is the email that I have sent to parents. video is to demonstrate time management and organization of work. So what I am pulling up here is the elementary summer school schedule document that I had to follow when I was at McWhorter Elementary. And so the librarian put together this schedule so that teachers each had one opportunity a week to come into the library. And so she tried to organize it by in increasing order of grade level. So we started with our pre-K bilingual. Then we moved into our pre-K ESL. 
kindergarten bilingual, kindergarten ESL. Then we moved on to our higher grade levels with second, third, fourth, and fifth grade. And we kept lunch consistently at the same day, or at the same time, excuse me, every day. And then we also had our conference time available with teachers at the same time every day, with an addition on Friday of before and after lunches in order to provide time to collaborate with the teachers if our lunch and our conference period conflicted with theirs. So this video is evidence of skill in reading promotion and creating displays or other types of reading promotion. They just look at Kirkus basically and buy whatever Kirkus has. Yeah, I've read something um, like in one of my PD things that really when we have meetings, we should feature a book. So like, they shouldn't read some of their books. Right. They don't, read, they don't. No. So I thought about kind of modeling that with starting our meetings with some sort of an e-book or picture book. Um, or you know, a, a nonfiction something, yeah. just to kind of highlight what's in the collection. So I, I would agree with that. Because yeah. I know a lot of the readers' advisory just comes from them looking on things like Amazon or Google that say, yeah. you know, if you like this, do this, instead of actually doing, you know, a reference interview or a reader's right. advisory. Right. Yeah. yeah. But I would agree with that too. Should I do like two books per, sh per show? Is that the best? Maybe three? Okay.
like the Indiana Public Library versus I do. I like that. Me too. I like how you get like every walk of life, every group of yeah, person. For sure. It's not limited to just you know the one area. Um, and that's another goal I have too is our our, a lot of our materials are definitely whitewashed. Our programming is definitely yeah. whitewashed, it's, which I think we need, you know, fine, because that is representative of the majority of our community. However, there needs to be some diversity. I definitely think that we need to expand. Just for, just for those kids, too. Yeah. They need to know. Um, like, for example, you know, just thinking about the last holiday season, mm -hmm. I mean, it was all. Christmas. It was all for any of the money. There was nothing Hanukkah, there was nothing Kwanzaa, there was nothing just winter yeah. holidays, which again, like I'm fine yeah. doing Christmas because again, you need to. that's represented. But it was nothing, it was just Christmas. It was just Christmas. You gotta have more than that. So if we're gonna do just Christmas, then we also need to be inclusive of the other holidays. Mm -hmm. If we're just gonna do happy holidays, then to me that's better. Than just and, and include everything. Yeah. Because some people don't even say you could do a winter, even winter. Just right? even winter time, like mm -hmm. the season, you know, having winter. Yeah. So, um, and I foresee pushback on that as well. Oh, yeah. Because I think there's going to be a lot of personal, yeah, you know. Realize it's not about well, and I think that's been part of the problem.